Brother Rick taught about him, I'm sure. And uh, I'm sure they sung about him in the Sunday school of uh, my class. I'm here to tell you again today that he's all that you need. There's a lot of things that uh, we think we have to have, but you got to have the first thing. Christ is the first thing. Jesus is still the answer. Now, it's not a uh, hocus pocus, get Jesus and everything vanishes. Okay, that's not the way it is. But can I tell you this? There's no better help than Jesus. He does make your guilt disappear. No longer guilty as far as he's concerned. He does instantaneously born you into his family at the meeting. He does instantaneously write your name down forever. That's instantaneous. He does move in your heart never to remove himself. I mean, that's, so there are some things that happen just like that hopeless folks. But uh, if you got your leg cut off because you was in a wreck and you get saved after you get your leg cut off, he's not going to put another leg. You look down, there's another leg. You understand that? Now you'll have to to walk in glory, but you ain't going to have to to walk down here. If you get your finger cut off because you had it stuck in somebody else's business, he's not going to give you another finger. Okay? That ain't going to happen. I'm going to tell you, uh, he'll let you point with other ones if you need to. But I'm telling you, there's some things that's not going to happen, but the things that matter is will. Let me tell you how big a Savior he is. He has taken liquor and turned it into house payments and groceries on the table. He's taken dope and made it into lawn furniture, porch swings, and toys for the king. Huh? He's taken people who wasn't allowed in the daylight. They only worked at night. He allowed them to walk down the road in the middle of the day. Arm in arm with people love. That's the kind of thing this Jesus. He'll take your lonely days and never let you be lonely. Take your dark days and give them life. That's what he does. And big things is the thing. But this old flesh is going to suffer. This old flesh is going to ache in pain. Thank the Lord for a lead there some morning. Just thank God for a lead. Huh? But I get a lead. Yeah. All right. Let's pray. I have a few thoughts for us this morning. And I don't have just one text. I've got a bunch of them, so we're just going to preach this morning, all right? I do believe if we'll listen, God will help us today, okay? Pray with me. Father, I come. Lord, I'm nothing. I know that, but boy, you're everything. There ain't nobody bigger than you. There ain't nobody as great as you. And I said, uh, even in our class this morning, how I thought that you would call me your friend the way I treat you, and you call me your friend. You're amazing. There ain't nobody like you. And Lord, I ask you if you would again to cleanse my heart and my mind, remove everything that might even resemble sin this morning, that there'd be nothing between me and you. And Lord, if you would touch me fresh with thy Holy Spirit, I shall be thanking you. I need power this morning. I need a memory. Uh, Lord, if you would increase my memory today, you would help me to be mindful of the Holy Spirit. And Father, as we open our hearts and our minds this morning, God, I pray that as the Holy Spirit speaks to us, that you'll give us the courage to step out and to do the very things that you want us to do, to be what we're supposed to be. Lord, as you mold us and make us, help us not to refuse or rebel. Help us to be compliant to your will this morning. <coughs> and I thank you for all that you've done. Boy, you've been good to us. I look around the church and see what you've done, see what you're doing, and Boy, it's just wonderful, and I appreciate it this morning. But again, God, these needs, 
And Lord, for every need in, in every seat that you speak to that need, may they be willing to let you fix their lives, I pray. In Jesus' name, and amen. Excuse <coughs> me. I've been called, as I've said many times, I've been called a realist. And I didn't know if that was a compliment or not when I first was told that. Doug Fisher, Preacher Doug Fisher told me one time, said, Brother Mark, you're just a realist. That's what you are. And I said, is that good or bad? And he said, oh, no, that's a good thing. I said, all right, now what is it? He said, you don't deal with a bunch of foolishness. You just get right to the point. Uh, that's reality. Yeah. I reckon I'm a realist this morning. I like plain and simple. I never could see no sense in beating around the bush or something. Just flat out tell you. And I have no problem looking at the eye and telling me. Uh, I think it's easier that way. I believe it's simpler that way. At least there's no confusion. And when I think about the reality of things and reality of the day and the reality of life in a sense... <clears throat> Sometimes we take for granted opportunity. I believe that the Lord gives us great opportunities for so many things. Great things. You have an opportunity here today. Some of you, I didn't know you was coming. That's one thing about a pastor. You can never be accused of preaching certain things to certain people here because you never know for coming or not. You understand it. So you can't plan a sermon for somebody. So anything that gets you, the Lord knows you're coming because the Lord knows the preacher. All right? <clears throat> but you've been given a great opportunity. Do you know that somewhere, someday, this will be your last service? There'll be a service that'll be your last day. Somewhere there's going to be, you're going to sing the last song you'll ever say. You'll hear or pray the last prayer you'll ever pray. That's reality. I don't know that it'll be today. It will be for somebody somewhere. Right? I don't know that it'll be for you. Be the last time you ever hear a note on a piano. Or the last time that anybody ever shakes your hand. There'll be a time all that happens. There'll be a, a last for all of us somewhere. And we take for granted the opportunity we have. We come into the Lord's house, and this is our house. We belong to the Lord. It's our house. But it's the Lord's house. We come in reverence. We come because, you know, we're supposed to in reverence. But we come and eat his people. And God has got opportunity for you. But always opportunity, can I tell you, the opportunity to help you is not the church. I hate to be belittle anything, but the church can't help you. We can't help you. All of our advice is not always good advice. All of our counsel is not always good counsel. But the Lord always gives what we need. Always. Now you think about that. Now he's got something planned for you today. I'm going to mention some things, and I'm going to mention some examples. But I can't mention the need that's in your heart. I can't tell that. I don't know. But the Lord knows, and He's waiting on you to simply come to Him. Right. Yeah. Are you listening? Right. He's waiting on you to come to Him, yeah. express your heart's desire, even though He already knows it. To let Him make you what He wants you to be. Because He won't do it forcibly. But He offers that today. You have this opportunity. You have what we would call another chance. Another chance today. I listened. Uh, Marcus was uh, talking. We was talking this week about some things. And we was talking about the opportunities that God gives. And, and uh, thought that uh, I even looked back at some old notes. And a message I preached even last year speaking of another chance. And I thought, you know, God don't... I've heard God is the God of a second chance. You ever hear that? Well, I got to thinking, you know, that's really not right. He's the God of a bunch of them. He's the God of a bunch of chances. 
He's the God of many, many, many things. He is long-suffering. He is. He is very patient and loving and kind and caring. He's compassionate above all. He is. He is really full of mercy and full of grace. He really is this morning. So it's more than just a second chance. I wonder how many chances have I had to do right? How many chances have I had to do for Him? I wonder how many chances I've had to get out of the mess that I've made for myself. How many? Could we say bunches? Could we say hundreds? Thousands? I don't even know if I could remember every opportunity or chance that I've been given to do better than I'm doing with the life that He's given me. It's amazing. It's amazing. But you know somewhere His <coughs> long suffering runs out. Let's look at a couple of verses this morning to start with. Let's look at Proverbs. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. There is a line that is drawn. See, we're here for another chance this morning. This is one of the many chances that God gives you today. And I don't know that this might be the last for any of us. I wonder if I know what would happen if I if I know I was going to preach my last sermon, what would I preach? Huh? What would I preach if I preached my last sermon? If I know, boy, May the 22nd, now Mark, that's going to be your last one. Better make it a good one. I wonder what I would preach on. Well, see, I don't know when my last one's going to be. So I better make it today like this last one. That's dangerous. Give me a cup of water. <laughs> Thank you. But it's, it's to think of if this is my last one. They sung a while ago. They sung about him that he'll dry every tear and wash away every sin. And I thought, man, I could have praised him. I could have praised him right there. But I didn't. What if I don't get that opportunity again? What if? What if? See, the line's drawn somewhere. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed. And that was that. It's not because he's mean, it's because he's just. Let's look on. 1 John chapter 5. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. Listen at the last part of this verse. There is a sin unto death I do not say that he shall pray for. There is a line that will cross somewhere where we're rebellious against God and sin continually openly that God says enough's enough and he drops the hammer. Yeah. Right. 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 That's just the Bible. Yeah. Right. And we don't think about it in the way we live our life. We go on and on. Boy, he's the God of many chances. But somewhere it'll run out. Somewhere it'll run out. Look at Romans chapter 1. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. See, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Somewhere that wrath will be revealed. Look at the next verse. Wherefore God also gave them up. We'll just stop there. There is a line. Go to the next one. For this cause God gave them up. Go to the next one. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over. Huh? There's a line that God draws. He is the God of many chances this morning. I'm glad I can stand and say He's the God of many chances. And this morning, you're in one of the very chances that God has given. Can I tell you that you're not out of chances and you being here today is very, very uh, convincing to me that God's not done with you because you're able to be here. We're given an opportunity today. This is another one of the many, 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 many chances that God has given us. I think of my own personal life. Before I was saved, I was raised in a preacher's home, raised in a Christian home, 
Hot right. Before I knew much at all, L.T. Jordan had already uh, told us how to memorize Romans 10, 9 through 13. The, the lot of scripture L.T. Jordan had taught us and, and uh, aiming up in little classes, Glory Jean and Mary B. Uh, taught me, Glory Jean Treadway and Mary, Jean, uh, Mary B. Price taught me lessons and then Miss Quarters taught me and then, then uh, Mildred Payne taught me and then uh, Keith D. Lung taught me and L.T. Jordan taught me. I had all them Sunday school teachers all my life growing up. Huh? Listen to preaching. Some of the greatest preachers, you know, that, that for as far as I'm concerned had ever preached. But I remember sitting on a church pew rejecting the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Sitting there on the front bench. Conviction. Knowing that I was a sinner. Knowing that I was guilty. And yet refused. And God in His wonderful love and mercy, yeah. spoke to my heart another time and another time and showed me, man, I'm the God of many chances. Yeah. Right. I prepared this message, Teddy. I'm glad you're here this morning. And I couldn't help but think of you. And I know you don't care me. You, you for an example. He sat right there for a year and two months. Right there where he's sitting this morning. Look at the chances he gave you just in a year and two months. That's not counting all the other days during rushing. And other people come by and holler at you to store. But I look and said, but look at you. Look how many years you've been in church, Cheryl Ann. You've been in church all your life. Look at how many chances he give you. Look at you, Becky. How many chances has he given you? I mean, they're gobs. They're hundreds or thousands. Look at the chances that he's given us to move up a little closer or to lift our hands in praise or, or to walk a little more like him or, or maybe you this morning that's unsaved and he's talked to and pled with and begged to come to him and yet you've rejected it. Now you're here again today to hear the message again and he's given you another opportunity today. Another chance. Boy, he's a God of many chances today. It's really good when you think of it like that. But they will eat. They will stop but it's not stopped today. You're here today. You got one today. We have one tomorrow. I can't promise that, but you got one today. And you've had many before today. And you better use the one you got today. Right now. Huh? Think about it. Think about it. I believe he'll work with us. Will he not? He works on us. He works with us. Patient man. I see that. I seen a cartoon on Facebook. Showed a man in a rusted down truck, the skeleton, hand on the steering wheel, he's elbow out the window, said she said she'd be five minutes. <laughs> Can I get an amen for any men? Yeah. What she said? She said she'd be five minutes. I don't know how I'm be hundred years of life. Huh? Huh? The Lord better than that. The Lord waits on us every second. Every moment, every day, showing us plenty of mercy, plenty of grace, waiting on us to comply to Him. Who are we? Who are we to think that we ought to make Him wait? Who are we to say, no, God, you hold on. Who are we to even come to Him like that? Yeah, He's still loving me. <laughs> Just like he's doing this morning, just for you. Just for you. It don't matter whether you've been saved for 50 years or for five days or five minutes. He's waiting patiently upon you today. So let's look and see if we can see some examples right quick. How about Jonah? Jonah 3 1 says, And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, what? The second time. He didn't give up on Jonah. Jonah was a, was a man of God. God told Jonah, you go down to Nineveh and preach what I tell you. Judgment's coming. Nah, I don't like him. I ain't going. That's what he said. I don't like him. I ain't going. I hate him. Get him. Huh? So, that's fine. No problem. Storm comes. So Jonah out to sea. Forward by a whale. Huh? That's exciting. <laughs> Go ahead. Don't take the chances God gives you. Get puked up on the beach. Huh? Are you listening to 
know me? Think about it. He puked up on the beach. You know, he didn't change his mind when he was got on the beach. He changed his mind when that whale's acids was eating his flesh off inside. When he was being digested, he was having a change of heart and a change of mind. And I wonder if Jonathan is like, boy, if you give me one more chance. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Right? I mean, that's simple Bible, is it not? Speed it out on the beach. I bet Jonah started, oh, oh, what scripture do I use? I bet he started preparing messages. Huh? No, he didn't do anything. He sat on that beach and he waited until the Lord spoke to him again. Sometimes we miss out on the opportunity and we've got to wait until he speaks to us again. Are you listening to me? Sometimes we'll walk out of church and God speaks to our heart and says, we should have done this, we should have done that. And you'll wonder, will I ever get back and let him speak to me again? Ah, oh, but he's a God of many chances. Yeah. And he come to Jonah the second time. Boy, I'm glad for another chance. I'm glad for another opportunity. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad that he allowed me to come to the pulpit one more Sunday. Yeah. And I might never get a preach again, but can I tell you, hey, like Jesus this morning. And I use my opportunity today to tell you without it, you ain't got nothing. Right. It's really good. It really is. How about first king? Oh, Elijah. Elijah fought a big battle. Sometimes we fight big battles. Elijah was a man of God, the Bible says, a man of like passions as you are, as we are. Elijah had just fought a bunch of false doctrine, false priests and prophets, had all their heads clipped off. He doesn't see rain come, rain go, rain come. Doesn't see fire fall from heaven. He was tired. You ever get tired? You ever get tired on the battle, get tired of the way, get tired of doing right? Your body's tired, your mind's tired. Huh? Not to mention depression when it comes and dark holes that come. Elijah's in a cave wanting to die, been threatened by others. The Lord comes to him, feeds him. Don't say that. Just feeds him. And I love this verse. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great. Boy, oh, I'm glad that when you're down, I'm glad when you may be depressed or discouraged or just may be tired from life. Boy, I'm glad that the Lord comes and says, you're not done yet. Rise, child, rise. You'll be okay. And he gives you just a little bit more to eat. Uh, another chance. I'm persuaded this morning that for every example I have, there's somebody that may fit that example right here today. I'm sure that God has asked us to go talk to somebody that we didn't like about His love and grace. I'm sure. But because we don't think highly of them or they've offended us or kicked our cat or run over our dog, whatever the case may be. I, we don't want them, we don't want it to nice to them today. <laughs> we don't care if we go to heaven today or not. Huh? We get like that. We don't like to admit it. We don't like to admit we're still sinners. But we are. Huh? He's given us opportunity just like Jonah. To do her again. Today. Today. He is. Just like he likes you. We get tired. We get discouraged, even though things have been going great. You know, I y'all know I have a depression problem. I have a depression problem. Why would I be depressed? Really? What do, what reason would I have to be depressed? Look at what all goes on great around my life. And I get in a deep hole but quick. And guess who I call? Is preachers in deeper holes. <laughs> Y'all know I went to Georgia. I don't know if I told you or not. When I went to Georgia there back in March to preach, I was down there with 
David next. Mr. Depression. <laughs> and I was down there with, with uh, John Day, Mr. Deep Hole himself. Huh? There's a man, man, man of God that fights this very thing. And then here comes Joe Chancey, who's had battle after battle after battle. And then here comes Edward Dixon. And then here comes Michael, all of us. And I, when I got up to preach, I said, look at this. I'm in a church full of basket cases. <laughs> Y'all want me to help you? Why? 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 Just so you can come by and give us another bite to eat before the journey. Amen. You get like that. I get like that. And all we need is another opportunity. Guess what he gave us this morning? <coughs> To give us another opportunity. Is it dark around you this morning? Are you tired and weary? He give you another opportunity to praise and deed and, and shovel in what he lays on your table. Just to look at Jesus this morning. It's a knife. It's a knife. Huh? Then there's other things. Elijah wasn't the only man of God that got discouraged. Sometimes you preach and, and uh, what was it? You said to me yesterday. I forgot what we were talking about. You made the statement, made me show in. Sometimes I wonder if it's real. And it wasn't just talking about the Lord, but that's some other thing. You ever wondered, is all this really real? Huh? Have you? You ever get in the shape when things are just so bad you wonder, is it really real? Well, let's look at the next one. Said Jesus answered and said to them, Go and show John again those things which you do here and see. John was in jail. They get ready to cut John's head off. He'd been standing up preaching and running. And they said, We're going to cut your head off. And they were sharpening the sword, and John said, So you know what? Jesus said, Go tell him again. Go tell him again what I've been doing and I've been healing the sick and raising the dead and, and doing all with me. Tell him I'm still who I said I was. Can I tell you this morning? He's still who he said he was. Yes, Though you may not see him. Though you may not feel him. He's still who he said he was. He gave me another opportunity to understand that today. Another opportunity. I'm thinking maybe this message this morning will be like that from now on. I might just title the rest of my messages till I go home to be with Jesus. Another opportunity. Yeah. Or the God of many chances. Just every Sunday. What are you going to preach on? I'm going to preach on Moses, the God of another chance. Yeah. What are you going to preach on? The resurrection, the God of the... But just anything. Can you put any message in this book if that ain't what it is? Any situation? That's the God of another chance. The God of many chances. Over and over and over. Are we all right this morning? Let's look on. Sometimes, sometimes we don't think we're worth it. Sometimes we, we're caught up in sin. Can I tell you this morning, there's people all over that are eyeball deep in sin, running their life. All you need is a new start. Can I tell you, he'll give you a new start this morning. I've preached it. It don't get old to me. This book don't get old. Let's look here at the next one. That's not the right one. Look at Matthew 11. Back up one. You missed it. Matthew 11. Jesus, Jesus answered and said to them, no, no, no. What do we have? That's right. John 8 one. He was right. I'm sorry. Jesus went into the Mount of Olives. Give him, that, give him to me quick. And early in the morning he came again into the temple and all the people set, came unto him and sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they, they said to him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery. In the very hour. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what saith thou? This, they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him, but Jesus stooped down and with his finger right on the ground as though he heard him not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said to them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again and again he stooped down. I like using again. 
And, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the least. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. You know what that tells me? That tells me that he's a God of many, many chances. Are you listening to me? Though our lives be a mess, though they be completely tore all apart, and nobody wants to do nothing but judge us, he's a Savior that's full of grace and full of love and full of mercy that will take you like you are are this morning and cleanse you and forgive you and give you a brand new start in life. That's the God of many chances. Huh? How many times have we been grabbed by the hair of the head by a Pharisee and shown and shook up to the world that we're no good? And rightfully so. How many of them, boys, a lot of us, we're all like it. Oh, but boy, there's a Savior this morning. There's a Savior that washes it away. There's a Savior that makes you as clean as a driven snow this morning. It's just the way He is. Just the way He is. He's a God of many, many chances. He's not the God of a second chance or a third one or a fourth one. He's the God of many, 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 many chances. I, I, it goes even further than that. Look at the next one in chapter 4. The woman said to him, this is the woman that sat at the well. Jesus just happened to go by the well. No, he said, I must need to go through Samaria. And the reason I got to go through Samaria is because somebody needs another chance. And he come through, and he come through Mountain State this morning saying, I'm going through Mountain State because somebody needs another chance. And he went through the queue. He said, there's somebody on this side that needs another chance. And somebody in this side that needs another chance. And somebody in this section that needs another chance. And there's somebody over here in this section that needs another chance. And I'm coming through and I'm telling you, I ain't nothing in your life and God won't forgive. And ain't nothing in your life and God can't clean up. And you can't be too far away that God don't welcome you back. It don't work that way. He's a God of many, 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 many chances this morning. Huh? Here the woman at the well, she was rough for the cob. I had to draw water in the middle of the day when nobody could see her. When nobody else would be at the well because nobody wanted to be around her. Everybody wanted to shun her. Huh? Yeah. Jesus waited on her. Boy, I'm glad that he still waits by the well. That's what the song says I've heard. Huh? We all right? The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Give me that. Jesus said to her, go call thy husband. <laughs> Come hither. The woman answered said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, thou hast well said, I have no husband. Thou hast had five. And he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. Come and see a man, she said. Then after she got her talk with him. Come see a man. Uh, Come see a man. Yeah. She got changed and she said, hey, hey, y'all, y'all, y'all can come see this man. Uh, he didn't throw me away. I said, come see me. Can I tell you? Come see me. Just go back there and talk. Come see a man. Let me show you a man. Yeah. That'll forgive me see. Yeah. Uh, what's your need? Write it down on the paper and I'll find somebody here and they'll take it. Come see a man. Yeah. Because uh, here in this church house, uh, I'm not one to belittle nobody, but can I tell you what's in this church this morning? These people, they used to be drunks. And these people, they used to be no people. And these people they used to be a little on the wild side. Huh? Are you hearing me? They used to lay where they had no men. That's what they used to be. Ah, uh, but no more. And they can tell you, come see a man. That'll tell you all that you need to know. Come see a man. Huh? Oh, let me tell you this morning. You can come see a man this morning. And I'll take care of what's ailing you today. I'm the God of many, 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 many chances. Take advantage of this opportunity. Better. Better. Let's look at the next one this morning. 
with the nation. One of the malefactors which were hanged rather than him saying, Thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answer rebuked him, saying, Does not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man had done nothing to me. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. That's another chain. Now, that's cutting it close. The thief, he'd been rife all his life. He had heard the preaching. He had heard about Jesus. Because when Jesus was hanging on the cross beside him, he knew all about it. He said, now, this man didn't do nothing wrong. He knew. You know what should have happened to this thief on the cross by Jesus? He should have died. He should have went to hell. You know why? Because he was guilty. I can tell you this morning that if we died and went to hell, it would be right. Because we're guilty. Every one of us is guilty. Guilty. The Bible says if you offend in one place, you're guilty of all. We're not guilty of one thing. We're guilty of all. Now, you name it. Well, I didn't do it. It don't matter what you said you ain't done, you're guilty of it. Huh? The matter stands, you're guilty of it. Well, all I ever done was lie. No, you didn't do that. You also committed it all through. You've killed, you've covered it, you've done all the same. Done it all? Are you hearing me? You, you've done one, you've done all. That's what the Bible said. I ain't said that's what the Bible said. Okay? The thief was guilty. He ought to have to hell. He ought to have. He nailed down. He couldn't go to church. He couldn't work. He couldn't do it. He couldn't turn over a new leaf. He was nailed down. Huh? But he couldn't wait, did he? You hear me? It was his last What did he do? Lord, remember me. Remember? Amen. You know, it, it ain't how you say it. It's what, how, it's what comes out of the heart. Amen. It ain't the word you repeat. Uh, huh? Remember me. That's pretty simple. Yeah. Hey, Lord, remember me. He said, well, this day I shall be with you in prayer. Yeah. Remember me. I always think, and I've told this many times, I think of Hitler. Hitler Underwood. A lot of people in this church knew Hitler Underwood. Yeah. Oh, Hitler was... Hitler. Had to know Hitler. <coughs> Witnessed to him for years. <coughs> Tried my best to get him in church for years. Each time, be a little closer, a little closer to an old man. Went down to see him. Down there seeing Bobby O'Dell. Bobby O'Dell. Y'all know, know, know Bobby O'Dell. He got run over by a truck. By his own truck. And uh, down the hospital. Went down to see him. They said, Hitler's upstairs. Heard go check on Hitler. Got a call. So I ran up to check on Hitler. Hitler had some tests, didn't know anything was wrong with him. Didn't know he had cancer, didn't know anything. He was sitting there waiting on the results. Sitting there on the bed. I went there and said, Hitler, you're going to have to do something. He said, I know. said, you're closing in on eternity, Hitler. You're going to have to see, I know. I said, why don't you just for one time or just go ahead and just say yes to Jesus? And boy, he broke and the tears started falling. He grabbed my hand and said, yes, 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 yes. I'll never forget that long ago. Yes, 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 yes. Huh? That's all you got to say when you're in disagreement. All you got to say, yes, yes, yes. You don't know how to pray. He didn't pray. He said, yes, yes, yes. And he told others what happened to him. Opportunity comes by. Boy, he forgot of many chances. Many, many, many chances. Every time we we come in here, it's a, another chance. Yeah. Another chance. Can I give you another? Huh? Can I give you another? I'll quit. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, 
turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Mm -hmm. Fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered, he said, Were there not ten cleansed? So where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God. Save this stranger. Might be your last <coughs> Might be your last opportunity. Yeah. Save. Thank you. Clean. Them old ten lepers come to Jesus. Boy, ain't that just like us. Them old ten lepers come to Jesus. Jesus healed them of their leprosy. They took off running. Nine of them just kept on going. One yeah. of them stopped and said, wait a minute. I got on the fingers by. Yeah. See, whether you know it or not, leprosy, you lose your feet and your fingers and your ears yeah. and your nose falls off. Yeah. You know, it, that's what happens. Yeah. It'll start and your body parts just fall off. Yeah. It was a miracle that they run. Do you understand that? A lot of people don't even think that. It was a miracle that they run away. He looked and said, wait a minute. I got on my toes. I got my nose, my ears, my hands. He wasn't going to run no further. He ran back. Tell on his face and said, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for cleansing me. You come to a house of worship. You got out and come to a house of worship. Yeah. Give us an opportunity. Thank you. Praise him. That's what he's done for us. See, if I was with the thief on the cross, if I was with the woman at the well, if I was with the woman taken in adultery, or if I was with Elijah, or if I was with John Baptist, or if I was with, with Jonah, I couldn't praise him for Jonah. I couldn't praise him for Elijah. I couldn't praise him for John. I couldn't praise him for the woman taken in adultery. I couldn't praise him for the woman at the well. I couldn't praise him for the thief. I can't even praise him for the leper. Right. But I have this opportunity today. I can tell you all this morning that I once was lost, right, yeah. but now I'm found. Right, I was rotten, and I ain't rotten no more. I was still thick, but I've been cleansed this week. This week. Week, twenty seventh day of May, forty three years ago. I met Jesus as my Savior. Forty three years ago, twenty seventh this week. I, I thought I'd return today. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to come back tonight and thank you. If I can. But if not, the last sermon that you heard me preach, we have gone to many chances. The last thing you heard me tell you is, oh, I'm glad he saved and cleansed me. Show him good piano. Jerry gives us a song. Would you bow your heads for a moment this morning? And I wonder this morning, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm not going to ask you to do anything like that. I'm going to ask you to do this, this very thing. I want you to look inside your own heart. Let's look inside your own life. And I want you to look at the needs you have right now. What need do you have? We got needs. All of us got needs. What need do you have this morning that you know you can't change? You can't fix it yourself. You made the mess. You can't fix it. You want to make it. Huh? 
For whatever it is, God has given you another chance this morning. He's given you a chance this morning to mind Him and obey Him. He's given you a chance this morning, if you're down and out, He, he to feed you and to strengthen you. He's given you a chance this morning, if you're living like you know you ain't got no business living, He'll fix your life. If you're not saved, He'll save you today, right now, if you'll let Him. And I'm going to ask you this morning, if you slip out of your seat and find you a place around this old altar, that you come to Jesus, use this opportunity to come to Jesus Christ this morning. He's the God of many, 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 many chances. And use this opportunity today. Would you do that? Father, speak in our heart. Even more than you have already. And I'll thank you and praise you for all that you do. In Jesus' name. And amen. Let's stand.